What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon in the building with the Forza 7. Yes, that is what I can say about this game. Fuck yes, let's go. Just to give you some context, I've been rocking hard with Forza for a very, very specific reason, and I have to thank Gran Turismo for that. After my switch from Sony to Xbox because of Xbox Live, there was a gaping hole in my heart. There was no Gran Turismo. And, you know, Gran Turismo is one of those things it's hard to get away from once you're into it. And then Forza came and it was like, whoa. I mean, it's not as Gran Turismo-ish as Gran Turismo, but it'll do. And then over time, it just evolved into this beautiful thing of its own. And then here we are, this fucking love letter to car lovers around the world with great simulation great graphics great sound great online community it's just a, a it's my god my mind is blown talking about forza 7 is something that is i want to say very interesting for the series usually throughout the forza there's a, a very consistent curve of going forward they very rarely misstep they very rarely get things wrong they, they're tried and true better graphics better sound better physics more cars and that's that's usually the trend here or there we may see a forza come out where it doesn't have the tracks that we had in the last one i'm looking at you forza 5 <laughs> and they they generally make up for it you know they may be some scumbag shit where we gotta get a we gotta pay for a porsche pack here and there but I can honestly say misstep is not something turn 10 does with the Forza series. But here, my god, there's a lot to discuss. Out the gate, there is seemingly uh, a shitload of, I would say, upset gamers, to which none of whom will even buy Forza or have a console to buy Forza. So a lot of these fuckboys in the comments complaining about shit they don't own is irrelevant but i will tell you there is some credence to the the outcry that's happening the first one and and the thing about it is people like to lump them into one it's really not the first real issue and i, I can say is the only issue here is the vip now what turn 10 did in the past is when you purchased the balls to the wall version of forza you got a VIP uh, pass associated to your account, which means for every bit of money, every dollar you earn in the game, it's times two. So it was a great way to get a boatload of money up and get the game early and get all this money to afford all these cars. So it was worth it, especially if you're someone like me that just you know the pure joy of forza is buying everything and tuning everything and then we can race but i just love the the collecting and the tuning and you need money to do this so the vip was always a plus for me here in forza 7 what they've done is the vip members get the game early hoorah and then you get these vip mod cards so mod cars are a way to sort of alter the racing experience in order to earn a bonus and more money. For instance, there's a mod card where if you force the race to happen at night, you get 30% more money. If you force the race to happen in the rain, you get 30% more money. Then there's also one where if you do the race without the braking or the line assist, you get 30 percent more money and you can have three mod cards equipped at any time so you stack these three cards that's 90 percent across the board that's kind of dope i really like that what i don't like is how turn 10 took the vip pass and assigned it to two or three mod i think it was two or three mod cards i can't remember how much but each mod card had a use it had a use limit so i think it was you could use it up to four times so after using that vip mod class uh, that mod card which gave you double the experience and whatever else you could only use it four times and the card disappears wait what 
this was not what VIP was about in the past. VIP existed throughout your entirety of that game. Fuck out of here, Turn 10. So people started making noise. Turn 10 then came out and says, okay, our bad, we got you. They gave us a million dollars. They gave us a bunch of Forza Edition cars to apologize. And Forza Edition cars are sort of like mod cards, but on a car. So when you race that, that particular Forza Edition car, you get 30% more money. And then if you race it on a specific track, on top of the 30% more money you get, you get like $100,000 extra cash. So, you know, whatever. They gave us five of those. Okay, cool. Right now, we're still waiting to get word on uh, when they'll roll out the VIP the way it was. So that's good. I, I like that. I don't appreciate the misstep. I appreciate the apology and I'm turning around and fixing it. Okay, let's rock. The loot crates or loot prizes is what they're called in the game. Everyone seems to be losing their shit. Now the loot crates are how you get the mod cars we were talking about earlier. And the mod cars, uh, I would say to me aren't a necessity here, but it's a good way to earn some money. The reason I didn't use mod cars in Forza 6 is because I had the VIP pass. So I didn't need it, money was coming out the ass. But I understand for those people who didn't buy the balls to the wall version, they need to rely on the mod cards. Now, you get the mod cards from the loot crates because you win them, uh, you can win them randomly. I, I don't know how random it is. I think like every 20 days a new one comes about and then you have the ability to buy them. So you spend 20 grand and you get these mod cards and, and of course it's the luck of the draw. You may get some rare ones, some common ones, some uncommon ones. But I don't get why everyone's bitching about this. This is no different than the shit that happened in Horizon 3 with the Forza wheel. What the fuck is the problem? Because people see a loot box, there's a problem? No, get on with it fuck boys, I see nothing wrong here, let's proceed with the review. I kinda said I only had one problem with the game, I lied, there's two. There's now this seemingly dope thing called car collecting, and at the surface it was kinda cool, but because I'm struggling for money, I really got a first hand glance at what this mode was all about and can i say fuck this car collecting thing so what turn 10 has done is they've given us nine tiers of car collectors and there are cars in the game that are locked behind a tier so for instance my workflow in <laughs> i said two things i don't like about the game there's a third coming right now <laughs> my workflow in any forza is very similar I get the game, I get some money, I go for a very specific set of cars to start tuning because those cars are my baseline to figuring out what's new about the game, the physics and handling of the game, the point index of the game. What are those cars you ask? I'll always get a Skyline R34, that's my all wheel drive. I'll always get a BMW M3 because it's a fucking M3 and I'll always get a Toyota Supra. Uh-oh, here we go. So, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, the there is no Toyota Supra because of whatever the fuck is going on at Toyota, so no one has any production car licenses. God damn it, Toyota, fuck you. Secondly, if I wanted to purchase the BMW M3, I could not because I hadn't yet unlocked that collector tier. Now, how do you unlock the collector tier? It means I have to buy a bunch of fuckboy cars I don't care about in order to unlock a tier to get to the car I do care about. That means I wasted a fuckload of money and time unlocking cars that I will never drive in my garage. I do not like that at all. Unlike the loot crate, unlike the thing with the VIP pass, I don't think this is something that turn 10 can reverse. Now, after putting some hours into the game, it, it doesn't really matter anymore to me personally, because I am, I think I'm a level seven. I, I think I'm a tier seven right now. So all of the cars that I wanna unlock 
are already there for me so i'm fine i don't care about the p-class cars and x-class cars those are what's in the higher tier i'll never drive those shits anyway but i i still have a problem dismissing this as if it wasn't a big deal because it is a big deal because there are people out there who care about these cars what about someone who bought this car who bought this game to play with f1 cars you're fucked homie you gotta buy a bunch of fucking toyotas and suzuki's before you can get that f1 not cool turn 10 not cool at all on the lighter side of things uh again it's been such a treat with this game both good and bad they seem to be shaking shit up for the sake of shaking shit up in in the forza 7 so the the car collecting shit fuck that the loot crate shit i don't know whatever fuck it anyway but here is one of the things where i actually kind of appreciated the homologation system my god what a difficult fucking word to to say because i've never seen that word a day in my life before forza 7 and the concept was just so alien to me and i read the blog post a million times and i still scratch my head what the fuck are they talking about i watched a few youtube videos out there i don't know what the fuck they were talking about it it seemed like they just read the blog post and got back on youtube and said what they said to get some views so i was left dumbfounded with the homologation and i just had to dive in there and figure out what it was all about well according to turn 10 the gist of the reason homologation exists is to bring balance to the car classes and as you know in forza things are separated by class there's the d c b a class and then there's the faster cars so the way we would tune cars and the way you would get into races is you would come with a car that was within said class and for us we would spend a lot of our time tuning and racing a class a class is a very interesting class because you can put a good few of parts on you can mod you can modify the cars quite a bit without making them totally ridiculous and undriving meaning uh, undrivable i'm sorry meaning you can soup up uh, a, a nissan 350z to the a class with a, a you know adjustable handling adjustable brakes you can do some aero work you can do some uh racing suspension you can put in a turbo a supercharger and it can be a nice car you put some tires on it you know it, it's a nice car without just installing everything like if you you put a thousand horsepower in that car it'll never fucking drive right so there was that aspect of it like an a-class front wheel drive civic was a fucking nightmare because of the torque steer you had a Civic with 600 horses, you can't hit the gas pedal. The, the wheel will never turn. So that was an issue. And I looked at the homologation as a way, and according to Turn 10, it was a way to really bring some calm to the situation and make some sense out of it. So after spending some time with it, putting a few hours, what I can honestly say is I agree. And what I get out of it is the the divisions that they introduce these cars and the restrictions of homologation really give you a feeling of adding uh adding some character to the car but it's still being true to what the car actually is so it still feels like itself and a, a few things go along with this there are now these uh divisions there are 60 of them in the game so each car belongs to a division you would say uh the the skyline the supra that's not in the game all of these cars would belong to something like a if you're familiar with project gotham the pacific muscle right and you got like all your old school muscle cars they've all got their own divisions and, and each division is about six or seven cars and i i think it's dope i like i like how that works now when you go into the division and you say okay i i want to uh I want to homologate the car here. Uh, I want to, I want to modify it, but I still want to keep it nice. the The divisions have restrictions on uh, four different things. They have a restriction on the width of the tire, which means you can't go you can't go past a certain width. Which means uh, the car conceptually cannot could never handle too too good, which keeps it in characteristic. 
uh, the type of tire oftentimes it's a street tire some of the other ones it's a sport tire i haven't seen anything with race tires yet because i probably don't race with those high class cars uh the amount of horsepower so for instance uh in the class where you'll have a subaru sti uh the limit on the horsepower will be about i think it was like 600 horses which is a lot for a subaru but you don't want more than that it doesn't it doesn't feel drivable after that and the fourth limitation would be the point index and uh, that just goes to make sure you don't uh, exceed a certain uh, point on the index, which means these four restrictions put together gives you uh, a good amount of room when building your car and the parts you're modifying it with and tuning versus the restrictions within the, the vision. That I think is cool. I didn't quite get it until i went online because the the thing about online right now and i don't know god knows what reason there are no a class lobbies if you want to race with a class b class c class class specific lobbies you have to do a private match and i remember forza 6 the same was there and they added it a few weeks later but whatever currently online there's only about four different races available uh, public races and they are division races that means if you want to compete online in these in these division races, you've got to come with your homologated car, which means it has to be uh, built and tuned to spec and restriction. It's actually kind of fucking cool. I found myself lost in the uh, one of those muscle car races, one of the muscle car divisions for about four hours. And I had some amazing races and I sat back and said, holy shit. This homologation division shit is kind of dope. Outside of those uh, changes that are made to Forza, there is some very noticeable changes, upgrades to the graphics. I had no idea the OG Xbox had it in it. <laughs> the game looks notably better than Forza 6. And there's a lot that's happening right now. The, the game has uh, so much more dynamic to it. It has, it's so much more life. For instance, when you're hauling ass on the highway, uh, if you've got a Forza wing or a big wing on the back, you see the wind sort of bending that that uh, that wing. You see it moving in the wind when it's under pressure based on how much downforce you gave it. You see antennas on the cars shaking as you go 150, 160 miles an hour. You see uh, on the high horsepower cars, you see the tailpipes, they vibrate when you're under full torque it's just like these little things are so fucking dope and then there's a the camera shake that they added and this is these are things i i want to go back to that the dynamics of of the uh the 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 mufflers shaking and and you see the antennas waving and the wings moving these are things that i felt like games like grid had and I always envied it like, man, I would love to have that in Forza. That would be so dope in Forza. And then here it is. And then there's the camera shake, the aggressive camera shake. Well, it's not aggressive, but it's there that you would get in games like Need for Speed that would give you this sense of speed. And it would be this sense of accomplishment when, when you wilding out and the camera's going crazy and you're like, holy shit, this is intense, but I made it, right? Now it's in Forza. That's super dope. I really, really like that. The sound in this game is up a notch. Now, I'm not saying it's Project it's Project Cars sound, but it's close. In fact, I think they could get it there if they just, they just lowered some of the volume a little and punch up the exhaust and engine. It sounds really good.
turbos sound like turbos. You hear them spooling. You hear that wastegate. You hear the blow off valves. The superchargers are winding. The mufflers are crackling. Oh my God, the, the sound is amazing. And now there's the, there's the, if your car is too low and it bo- it's bottoming out, you get that thump. <laughs> that that well, just like a big piece of four thousand pound metal structure just hit the concrete you get that that feeling from the sound and it's it's oh my god the sound is amazing i can't say enough about it uh i i like the individualities of the engines i like the individualities of the different mufflers uh it's it's all there and if you hit the bump strip aggressively you hear your suspension reacting it's it's uh reacting sorry it's it's super dope and it, this game is a joy to play and listen to in some really good surround sound and some good headphones my god great job on the sound there's also some returns of old favorites like Magello. my god i loved Magello. i would like to see some uh, like the fuji mountains come back i think those are super dope but i i like the mix that's happening here we get some new tracks uh, we, we get some new cars most of which most of the cars in the game we've seen littered throughout uh, past Forza series so that is what it is but this is an incredible mix of a game even the bad adds to a character this is I don't think we've ever seen a Forza as characteristic as this with this many aggressive changes uh, for me what makes it a special Forza what makes it a Forza to own if you're one of those people who you don't need to own every every forza you buy specific ones uh the the graphics increase here right well, which is not a big deal because it happens every year uh but the sound is notable here the addition to the camera shake and the movement i think adds a level of intensity that uh, we haven't experienced in any other forza and brings it up to par with modern racing games the dynamic and the life that the game has with things like the the mufflers shaking and and the you know the, the the wings bending under downforce and pressure I, I think that's super dope uh the homologation which makes it more challenging for tuners and builders to fit their cars and restrictions the divisions i like how a lot of different cars are all parts of different divisions i think that's also cool i like the fact that they left in the old backbone to the the pi system the point index where if you just want to race a class if you feel like you want to bring your A-Class Civic against my fucking A-Class Ferrari? Let's do it. Uh, I think that was also something that always made a Forza, like a Forza, and made it very good was the diverse racing. And that's still there, so that's good. Uh, there, there's a lot about it that makes it a very, very strong mix for the Forza series. And I think a very strong racing game in general. Now, is it the best simulated? Does it have the best physics on the market? Probably not. I would look at Project Cars for that. Uh, does it have the best sound? Probably not. I would look at Project Cars for that. Uh, does it have uh, the best array of cars? I think so. You know, it's it's just all together. It's a stellar offering and it's hard to beat. I, I think the only thing that could really beat everything that Forza 7 has to offer is Forza Horizon 3. And that's for a whole different reason because these games are completely different. And if you look at the type of gamer you are that's where you may start to see where one's more valuable than the other but forza motorsport 7 i highly recommend it i'm going to be wasting a lot of hours on this game i got a ton of tunes up right now you guys know if you need something tuned you can reach out holler at me send me a message on the xbox leave a comment here do what you do my name is ramon i'm out of here peace